a lot of talk about how job roles are changing in L&D. Obviously, we are getting more and more technology coming through all the time. So in that sense, how do we deal with it? What impact does it have on the solutions that we produce? Um, one example might be mobile learning, where courses or e-learning have to be responsive. Um, do we need to understand better what that means in terms of how we produce a course? Or can we just rely on the authoring tools and you know, tick a box that says make it responsive? I suppose um, the challenge is that uh, there are certain core skills. Some people say, do we need more specialists? Uh, I might argue that you need a really good team. Uh, it takes a long time to be really good at one particular aspect of, of an L&D role. So I think it's really good if you have lots of specialists who work together and maybe are flexible with their roles. But there are some other skills like facilitation skills, which I think are key networking skills, you know, keeping across your network and learning from other people. Learning to be a good learner yourself because you have a responsibility to develop yourself if you're going to tell other people you know, that that's what they have to do. And there is a lot out there to learn because things are changing so fast. I think people do need to be changing their skills and developing. I mean, we are L&D, we are there to help the organisation develop. We should be developing ourselves. It goes without saying, it's our responsibility. So personally, I think I'm always looking to see what else would be interesting to learn about. Uh, I think people need to be aware of the difference in roles. I think there's a lot of talk about me, you know, moving away from just delivering courses within the organisation to being more consultative. So do people have the skills to go in and run a business performance needs analysis? You know, what questions do they need to ask? For me, it's quite simple. I ask questions like, what does the future world look like? Where are people now? So what's the gap in between? What skills and behaviours do you want your people to adopt? Uh, and then how does that feed into any learning solution that you design? There's a lot of facilitation skill in what I do, which maybe isn't always recognised. Um, and I think being a good facilitator is a powerful tool for any person in L&D having new conversations with the business. You need to be able to ask the right questions. You need to be able to listen, probe, present what you think you've heard back to people for reaffirmation. Uh, and also perhaps to deal with conflict if you've got different experts in the business who don't agree, you, know, you can't leave the room without having a, a set, agreed agenda as to what you're trying to achieve. I would differentiate between content knowledge and skills. So for me, uh, I might be asked to do some e-learning on any number of topics, ranging from an introduction to baking through to business continuity and disaster recovery. So that's new knowledge that I will absorb, but I will use the same skills to identify the need, work out uh, the learning objectives, identify the behavior that needs to change, and then factor that into a learning design. So um, I suppose the core skills are very similar. I may not be across all the latest skills myself, like you know data, analysis etc but I would expect somebody on the team to be able to do that and give me a steer as to what that means so I guess there's a rate there's a danger that if we have if we expect everybody to develop lots and lots of new skills they may feel overwhelmed it's about focusing it's about looking at the team as a whole uh, and seeing who can develop what specialism but I guess making sure also that everybody has a core level of this, the key skills that are needed Team skills, again, is, is, I think, the role of the manager. So what projects are you working on now? What is coming up? Any good manager, and I know there's a lot of accidental managers around who struggle to do that kind of job. For me, that's about knowing your team, knowing their strengths, identifying what their interests are in terms of self-development, what works for the team, and then working with them to develop those skills as we know, it's not necessarily a course, although it could be, 
but it may be something as simple as giving them more autonomy on a new project, giving them the lead on a project, giving them responsibility for managing other people in the team, you know, those kinds of things. Taking people out of their comfort zone and giving them good feedback to make sure that they are, you know, developing and learning and benefiting from that development and adding to the competence of the team as a whole. You need an overview of the market and the skills that you need, maybe your organisation needs, or you might be a freelancer trying to win new clients. I would advocate net networking is a core skill there because you need to keep across what's happening in the industry. Your peers can help you with that. You also need to be hunting down new information and new developments. And then at that point, I think as an individual, you can make a conscious decision about which direction you would like to go in. If you've got a strong network, you can reach out to them for advice. I have recently been seeing some conversations on the e-learning network uh, social media sites about qualifications in e-learning and L&D, uh, particularly apprenticeships. And I think there's a whole area there that we could do more to promote and perhaps you know, give people a um, recognition that they have developed to a certain level. And if we are going into a skill shortage, which I think is possible, then maybe that's a way forward because there's plenty of money out there for apprenticeships that's not being used. <laughs>